Okay, let's get into changing our tires and tubes. Uh, I suggest that any of you guys can go ahead and save a lot of bucks. All you got to do is just do it yourself. Uh, we are not going to need a lot of tools here, and it's not a hard job to do. And once you do it about two or three times, it becomes really, really uh, a fun job to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our tools and let's get these tires changed out on the bike. Uh, here I have a 1968 Sportster XLCH. So let's go ahead and I'll review all the tools that I used. Okay, what I have here, I have two 15 inch tire bars and one tire bar that is about maybe 10 inches long. So you need three bars. And also you will need two rim protectors. The two rim protectors are gonna keep you from, from scratching up your nice chrome rims. And so I always use these. Also, I have a pair of these right here. I think they're called forceps, like in the medical field. And I use these actually I'll put it through the hole inside my rim and I'll grab that valve just like this and I'll pull the valve all the way through all the way through the hole inside my rim just like so makes it nice and easy so these are all the tools that I use to take the tire on and off my rims Okay, now that I broke everything down, I have the tube, I have the old tube laying there, and I have the old rim band laying there as well. And I, I had broken everything down, and what I'm going to do next is file down all the sharp edges inside the rim. And I'll file all of that down nice and smooth. And I'll prep everything for a brand new rim band and a brand new tube. So let's put the brand new rim band on first. Just like that, and that's all that takes. All right, next I'll put a little bit of soap on the inside of the tire bead, and that will make it go on a little bit easier. Okay, now I, I suggest you put the tire down flat on the floor, not on a table. Okay, do it, do it flat on the floor so it's nice and stable. And then go ahead and find yourself a nice piece of cardboard so you don't scratch up your rims on the floor. Okay, I'll take both of these nuts off first. And I'll unscrew these two nuts off the valve. And I'll get these out of the way for right now. So let's go ahead and spin these two nuts off the valve here.
And we'll spin him right off. I have one side of the tire already on the rim and I left the one side off of the rim. Now this is when you put in your brand new tube. So let's go ahead and I'll fit the brand new tube. And I'll snake it all the way around in there. Alright, I'll, I'll make sure I put the tube in there flat, nice and easy. You, know, you take your time with this, okay? And just put the tube in there nice and flat. All the way around. And then I'll line up the valve with the inside hole of the uh, rim itself. Now I got those four steps. I poked inside the rim hole and I, I grabbed the inner tube valve and I pulled it straight through. And then I put the lock nuts on. Now before I put the tire all the way on, I, I'm gonna inflate the tube first. And I want to uh, take all the folds out of the tube so the tube is nice and straight and I don't have any bends in the tube. So let's go ahead and I'll inflate the tube and after I do so, and then I'll take out the valve and let all the air out of the tube and I'll put the tire on the rim and then I'm all finished. Simple as that. Okay, here's the valve I took out of the uh, tube and now I'm, I'm gonna let out all of the air and once all the air is out of the tube and now I'll go ahead and install the tire. Okay, now this is at the point where you do not want to pinch your tube. So take your time with this, okay? And put the lip inside. Make sure that that you don't pinch your tube. Take your time with it. And we'll start the tire on its rim. Yeah, I'll just get it started. Just like so. Okay, now I, I have started to a point and now I'll use my bars and I'll begin to put the bead of the tire around the rim. And again, I don't want to touch that tube, okay? I'm staying away from it. I'm just taking my time. And I'm gonna work my way all the way around. After you do this about two or three times, you know, it's a very easy job to do actually and uh, you know you could change it out uh, in in a very very short time you know I can't see why you'd want to bring it into a shop and have to wait about a week when you can do it yourself in a very short time so I encourage you to go ahead and do all this yourself it's not hard to do it all okay I'll keep that bar on one side and then I'll go around the opposite side here and then I'll pop the thing right on. Just like so. And it's all finished. And I'll air it up to the proper PSI. And I'll make sure that bead is all the way even, all the way around the rim, okay, on both sides. You want that guideline uh, straight all the way around your rim on both sides. 
and now if your guide line is not straight take out the air and then and push your tire around until you get that guide line straight on both sides of the rim and then reinflate your tire that's all you have to do and then you're all set to go then um, next we are going up on top of the balancing stand balance off the tire so then we're going to finish yet so just hang in there guys we're almost finished And please take a moment to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. back on there okay now listen before we take it out to the balancing stand what I like to do first I'll put your brake hubs up on top of the bench and I'm gonna polish them out first and I'll take out all those little pits and all those scratches if I have oxidation pits inside here what I'll do I'll, I'll take some wet sanding paper and I'll wet sand down the brake hubs until I get all those deep oxidation pits out and then I'll follow up and then I'll, I'll polish everything out nice and shiny just like they were brand new it's all part of the job You know, now as a young kid, I never liked chrome plated parts because they start to pit and the chrome plating starts to peel off. Then you're stuck with a junk part. But these parts here, if, if you don't chrome them, you could always keep them looking like brand new again. Go over them, take off the oxidation, just like this. And the parts always look like brand new. That's why I never like chrome plating on the oil tanks or on my chain guards or on my brake hubs and, and on my swing arms and all the engine parts. And you save yourself a lot of money like that too. I love polished aluminum. That's the only way to go, polished aluminum.
I have the tire on, on top of the balancing uh, stand right here and I'm going to just spin it around and let it spin until it stops okay now um, when you rotate it for the first time what it's going to do it's going to come to a stop and then it's and then it's going to counter rotate and when the tire counter rotates and comes to a stop then you get a piece of chalk and then you mark the tire sidewall on that um, on the portion of the tire that came to a stop uh, which is going to be down it's not going to be up it, it's going to stop on on the lower part of the rim okay just like it did right now as you can see that it stopped and now it's beginning to counter rotate and it's counter rotating until it be, until it comes to a stop right there okay now i'll get a piece of chalk and I'll, I'll mark it right there okay and then i'll do this process about two times or three times and now it's going to need a weight on the opposite side of that chalk mark just a very very tiny weight that's all it's going to need just like this one right here i put a little tiny weight in there and now it is really looking good and like I told you, I, I want that guideline even all the way around the rim on both sides, just like this. And so now it's only going to take a very small weight. And that's all you have to do. Now I have a lot of bigger weights here too as well, but... But I never use them. I always use the small weights. Just like this one right here. A very, very small weight. That's all you need. Now, if you need a big weight, then I would say something's drastically wrong, okay? You should never need a large weight. All right, let's go ahead. I'll, I'll put the balancing rod right through the bearings that I have installed in my rim right here. And I'll make sure that the balancing cones are, are uh, tight and I don't have any side play. And I'll move those cones in nice and tight and then I'll take my set screws and I'll tighten them down okay where I don't have any side play and I'll do that on both sides make sure the cones are nice and straight and nice and tight where I have no side play at all Okay, see it? I have the cone right at that bearing right there on both sides, and they're nice and tight, and I have no side play. Just like so. All right, let's go ahead, pick the thing up, and put the whole thing and set the balancing stand. I just set it right up in there make sure it's straight 
uh, give it a little bit of spin uh, and I don't have it straight. I have to give it a little bit of push here and make sure that axle is straight inside that stand. Let's give it a little push just like this. Okay, now I have it. Now it's nice and straight. Okay, I did spin the uh, rim one time and it, and it counter rotated. Uh, so I put a piece of chalk mark on, on that counter rotation mark at the low end right there. And I'm going to spin it one more time right here. And uh, it should end up at that chalk mark again. And I'll do this about two or three times. And then I'll start adding weight to it. Okay, I have my mark set down right here, and I rotated it nice and slow, and it came around to the same mark. So that means I need a little bit of weight right up on top here. You know, not that much, actually. You know, I like to do this about two or three times, you know, so I want to make sure. that's going to return to the same mark that I put on the side of the tire. And here it comes. I have my mark set right there. So I'll add a couple of weights, or I'll add about a half an ounce actually to about right here. Like even that's a lot. I'm going to start out with a real lightweight and build myself up but you know with this I can tell now that it's almost there now and so it's in pretty good shape and so the balance on this tire is actually good now it's not that bad and get yourself a balancing stand uh, and the tire irons and save yourself a lot of cash and save yourself a lot of time so you're not sitting around waiting for a week and trying to get your tire back so go ahead and i encourage you guys to do all your work yourself so thank you for watching max and tillotson and until then i'll see you next week you take care of yourselves